playing around with the new loose Conrad and Ahab brush pens. So I mainly do, you know, watercolors tutorials on this um, page, but I noticed that when I was researching these pens, these brush pens, there wasn't a lot of reviews out there on them. So I bit the bullet, ordered one of each, and figured I'd do a review as I played around with them for the first time. I wanted to mainly use utilize them just for art techniques rather than um, writing. So that's the approach that I'm going to take. So I have various different papers that I want to try it out on. Um, I'm going to try the filling and the cleaning and whatnot. So I'll try to go through the motions and um, try to give you some sort of accurate idea about these. That's from a previous video of a company that had generously sent fountain pens for my students in my classroom to utilize. So first, let's look at the Conrad. The Conrad is set up like the basic Conrad itself where you twist off the end, you have that internal piston filling mechanism, and the unit is actually screw in as opposed to a friction fit which they have on the um, standard fountain pens. So it came with a ballpoint installed and this was extra and I just twisted the one out and twisted the other one in so it was super easy to set up. Let's see okay so let's fill this guy up. Um, I had kind of set up a little plan with this where in the end, I want to try just an artistic um, approach and see what happens. So this guy, I had wrote a list. I want to fill it up with the Heart of Darkness. So let's see how it fills up. Unfortunately, with the eyedropper bottles, it does make it a little bit difficult for me to you know set down the eyedropper as I fill it up. But I do really like Noodlers a lot. And I'm not knocking the eyedropper at all. I think it is a great addition having that there. So anyway, that filled up really easily. I wanted to try it out on different papers. So just wipe it off, get inks all over my hands. Maybe cap it. Okay. So let's see. I actually had some cartridge paper, so we'll just try that out. Okay, we get that dry brush effect, which I'm going to want. Um, what little I did find, a lot of people did say they were very wet flowing. So, hopefully it'll stay in this fashion. I'm not going to try to adjust anything. For writing purposes, just if you are watching, that's the type of line can get. So you have to be very gentle. I think in Nathan Tardif's video, the guy who invented these and put them together, you know, he talks about, you know, Japanese Chinese writing, how it'll do very perpendicular to the page. Orthogonal? I'm not sure. Anyway, and it's used for the brush lettering. But we're going to use it for the artistic approach. So we'll then try it on fountain pen paper. It does lay out differently on fountain pen paper. I'm not well versed in the nature of paper meant for fountain pen pens, but you can see here it absorbs, here it sits on top. So um, I'm not sure if it's sized or what. Here is actually a list of what I wanted to talk about and I'll just show it on the Rhodia paper. Okay, so that's just a few different papers just for you to see it on. Ultimately, I want to do this on um, cotton watercolor paper. That's the end goal of this video. Next, we have, I'll put that on the side. We have the Ahab which 
Oh my God, this brush is huge, 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 huge compared to this other one. So um, it's definitely gonna be used for laying down a lot of ink. Now it has that piston filler, but I had ordered this one mainly just because I could put the Noodler's 308 cartridge in it and um, kind of swap it out. So I wanted to be able to apply this. We'll see how the cleaning process looks and the switching process where it looks and how quickly it starts up from a cartridge. So I'm putting in Noodler's Lexington Gray. Okay, this is great how easily that um, eyedropper fits into the 308 cartridge. So that's very, very, very convenient. I'll only fill up halfway. I don't anticipate having to fill up more, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So 308 cartridge with Lexington Gray in Noodler's Ahab brush pen. Just having it sit down vertically. Um, I'm guessing we would see it start to feed into it. Yeah, you can see it start to feed out. I may have to fill this up some more. So while it's doing that, um, just to kind of give you whole, my whole goal, I just want to test this out just to see how the brush marks are. Then I'm going to switch over to 100% cotton paper. I want to use the Lexington Gray for um, a broad dry brush effect, landscape idea. Come back in with the Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Then we'll switch out the 308 cartridge. We'll see how the uh, piston filling mechanism is for cleaning out this brush. We'll fill it up with a Polar Brown and then we'll put that into our landscape and see how it looks. So let's see. Cartridge paper. Okay, Lexington Gray. It's very dry brushy, but I have a feeling that it just hasn't really started flowing yet. But getting a very textural effect, which is what I definitely wanted from this. Can we get rid of the cartridge paper now? Sure. Okay, this is our fountain pen paper. I'm not sure the exact brand, does it say? I know I got it at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if it was like an Eco made in Italy. I'm not sure. Anyway, we can see that it has that different sitting effect as opposed to being absorbed right away. And you get brush streaking occurring. We can now put this one away. And then we'll see on the Rhodia. It does that same. It's sitting on top. All right, so again, in my research, I had found that a lot of people talk about them being very, very wet. And people using them mainly for highlighters and the highlighter ink, which Noodlers does sell highlighter ink. And you can see how if I wanted to highlight, this is um, platinum pigmented blue. Oh, yeah, so you could highlight with uh, Lexington Gray. Awesome. So it does have that practical application. Okay, let's close this up and get to the meat of what I really wanted to do. So I have a eight by 10-ish piece of watercolor paper, 100% cotton, this is um, Aqua Stonehenge cold press. 
the, what is it, the 180 pound, which is my go-to for um, my watercolors. Now, looking at it, there's a little bit of intimidation with the size itself. However, let's see. I'm gonna use up this brush and put in just dry brush effect. I think that personally, art-wise, being at my art desk, if I was to um, you know, paint, I'd use my watercolors. I can tell you that right now. This is for um, smaller pieces of paper. This would be a five by seven is the goal to have this on hand for. And whenever I'm traveling and heading around. So. It'd be good for sketching. I think if you're using a watercolor notebook, it'd be very good. I'm not sure how sketching would work with um, the Rhodia. Though I do have some pads of the non-dotted, non-graph, so just the blank Rhodia paper, which is my preferred paper. I think it would be good for tonal studies. I picked the three colors uh, for this one mainly because they're they're on the more permanent side. I do have um, Noodler's Bed Blue Heron and La Reine Mauve, which are very um, bulletproof and light fast for fountain pennings as well. So those guys would be filled up with. Um, filled into a 308 cartridge, which after a while we'll see how that um, cleaning and switching process pans out for me. So I'm just building up shapes with this. I can tell you right now the size that I chose for the paper, like I said, was um, a not not the greatest approach for this. But you can see we have that far distant mountains or um, hills or trees. I found Lexington Gray to be a great sketching ink when I have it filled into a pen. I'm going to bring in a shoreline. So we have reflections. I'm going to bring in a shoreline. Bring this guy up and around. Cloud effects in the sky. It is putting out a lot of ink, and it looks like we are at the end of that. So if you were gonna do, do a, a sketch on site with a uh, Noodler's Ahab brush pen on a eight by 10 piece of paper, you would want a full cartridge. The full cartridge would almost be done on this size paper in one sitting. We do have a little bit extra in there, so maybe I think you'd want an extra cartridge on you if you plan on doing a lot of multiple sketches. It's fun. I think the brush, yeah, the brush is nylon, which I am very aggressive with my brushes. And I think it'll hold up to that, the nylon. I don't think we lost any brush hairs or anything like that. 
Which, oh my god, whenever you're oil painting and you lose a brush hair in the oil and you have to pull that out, oh, that's the worst. So let's cap that. Nope, let's clean it out. Let's try that out. So I'm going to set this off on the side. I have two bottles of water, one, two cups of water. Let's see how this cleaning will work for us. So I'm going to switch over, Ooh, almost open it the other way with some extra ink in it, to the plunger filler, fill up some water. Now, another thing that I did come across was that, you know, people did say that the brush hairs, I think they remained, they, were like, they might have stayed stained. And then they said, you know, which is fine for them because, you know, they were just mainly using Noodler's Heart of Darkness in it. So, regardless, you know, brush ends get stained. I'm not sure about the, the nylon. I have goat hair right here, and that's definitely a little stained from the thallo uh, paints, the thallo blue. Okay. Move that out the way. I'm just going to put this cap back onto the end to close it up and that's the convenience of the 308 cartridges is that you could have essentially vials of ink to travel around with we'll remove this guy which might have a little bit extra water in it yep we'll then grab our polar brown And before, when I started off, I said, you know, the inconvenience of putting down the eyedroppers. You know, the, this this benefit definitely outweighs the inconvenience of having to put an eye put down the eyedropper. So I filled it more than halfway, almost three fifths. Why am I capping that side? I do not know. We want to put that on the end so we don't lose it. Close that up. Hmm. Where's that? That came up the breather tube, I think. I'm not sure if you're supposed to leave the breather tube in whenever you use the 308 cartridges. I'll look into that um and if anybody's curious i'll eventually post a response okay so now we have polar blue so the switch over wasn't that bad if you had to do this out and about if you were sketching and had to change colors you would most likely have to have a little cup of water with you. Um, I'm not really sure what are the way you can go about doing that. That's another thing we'll have to research or see if there's any suggestions. There might be a, a very simple method for rinsing it off. But if I'm out and about watercoloring, I do have water with me. And down here in Louisiana, you know, you definitely want to have water if you're out and about. Okay, so we're trying to get our brush to um, fill up. So we did the switch over. We're still working with the Ahab with the big brush. Uh, we'll play with the polar brown on top of this. And then, so this was Lexington Gray. And then we have the Heart of Darkness in the Conrad. And that's a finer brush, so we'll do some different detail with that. So let's see. So 
we're trying to get this brown to start flowing. Okay. Now I have the Noodler's Polar Brown, and I have the Lawrence L. Lawrence, the Noodler's L. Lawrence, which is the kind of, is it the Black Brown, the L. Lawrence? I have Platinum Pigment, uh, the Sepia Sepia. I like my browns. I really want to try Noodler's um, number 41 brown. So we'll have to see that one day. Okay, so we got this one going. We still have that dry brush effect. So we're gonna go in over everything. Give some warmth to our ink drawing, ink sketch, ink brush. What would be good is to have a gray, a brown, and a red, kind of like the Conte crayons and look at Conte sketches from that standpoint, uh, but using the brush pens. What other combinations would work? Hmm. You could probably vary your degrees of browns. However, and I, I'm no expert with this, I'm just thinking, you know, just passing this on top of the Lexington gray gives us that variation of darkness. And, and that was the main goal here is to mainly just do a kind of a tonal experiment. La Reine Mauve, which was the dark purple, um, and Kung Te Ching, which is that dark as well. Hmm. We could do those. But you probably want to use them by themselves. Maybe them in a, in a black or a gray. Kind of just do the two colors. The bad blue heron. Use that with either the, just the Lexington or something else. And you can use all those colors by themselves. Um, uh, the Zivago, is that how you pronounce it? Z H I V A G O. That would look good in its own right in a brush pen. Same thing with the L. Lawrence. I think generally the armies would be interesting. If you're um, journaling and you're not exposing it to too much light, I'm sure the um, the base date colors would look great, but I think they would. Um, potentially stain the pen so you'd have to do a little bit more cleaning uh, maintenance. I don't own any of those. I would love to try them one day. Okay, so we have our puller. So let's see where we're at, remembering that some is going to flow down. So I said it was about three-fifths of the way up. So we used a decent amount. So a brush pen I definitely think you would want uh, the 308 cartridges with it, which are like a dollar each. Definitely, definitely worth the investment. Okay. So 
it's just a sketch. We're just putting the ideas in. So let's close this up. Now, um, evaporation and whatnot within the pens, I'm, I'm not sure about. We'll have to do, a, I guess, a long-term experiment and start up. But with this, I don't think it'd be really that much of an issue. You'd have a little bit of water on hand, so you can probably just dip the, uh, the brush right in that. Now I want to switch to the Conrad, which is the finer, and I physically prefer Conrad's over Ahab's, I think. I don't know. I have to, to use them both more. Let's see. So this is Heart of Darkness. So I wanted to put kind of those three values in. I kind of put the Lexington as a, um, a mid, the uh, polar brown as a to warm it up and then this is going to be for our darks now considering the amount of ink that we used within the Ahab I don't think that the Conrad would be great for a large um, ink painting. Like if you have a huge large ink painting just because of the capacity within it. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's meant for that. And I, I think it's originally meant, like I had said, for um, The highlighting and potentially the, um, the 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 Chinese approach of the vertical brush writing, but it is serving its purpose just fine within this little imaginary landscape sketch. We might have to do a little cleaning of this as well. So as um, like a tonalism approach, this is exactly kind of, you know, exactly what I wanted it for. And the colors I chose were definitely perfect for moody, broody um, sky reflecting the water and showing the silhouette of the tree line. Now does lay down quite a bit of ink. Quite a bit. And this is on cotton paper. At this point, I, I'm just playing around just seeing what type of textural effects and line effects would be necessary to make an interesting painting. So, um, the review itself is pretty much done. The paper is still wet. So what I'm going to use, if you're wearing earbuds, you want to take them off. I have the blow dryer just to blow dry it and see how it affects, um, see if there's a tonal shift that takes place.
I mentioned tonal shift. Now a tonal shift is because we have um, water within watercolor, or in this case, um, water-based inks. And whenever you are removing that water from it, you're gonna have a shift downward in the, um, I believe it's, I don't know if it's the value or the chroma. Uh, there's just so much terminology with it. But the best thing to think about is this. You see a sidewalk. When a sidewalk gets wet, it looks darker. When it dries, it lightens up. So that's a tonal shift that takes place. It's more um, pronounced with various types of uh, watercolors. With inks, I'm not sure. But, you know, it's that kind of glisten that you know might disappear. But um, there really wasn't much change. I'm not claiming, and also I'm not claiming that this is any great work of art or masterpiece, but I do like the Lexington Gray versus the Heart of Darkness. There, I do feel like there is a push there taking place. I did put that warmth throughout, so it kind of flattens a little bit more. Um, but overall, I think with, with more experimenting, I, you know, I want to see what else is possible. I want to start looking at five by seven potential uh, pieces and using it for transporting. But a Noodler's Ahab on watercolor paper with Noodler's Bulletproof Ink and 308 cartridges is a great combination for a um, brush pen with ink. I could say that right now, it's, it's fantastic. The Conrad definitely has its different use where it has those thinner lines and I can use it um, after the fact. So the Conrad as well as an, from the standpoint of an ink pen for this application is great as well. So very happy with the two items, the two purchases, the Noodler's Conrad brush pen, Noodler's Ahab brush pen. I'm looking forward to experimenting with them more. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope um, it maybe gave you some insight if you plan on purchasing one of these items. It might be a little still wet. That's why I'm able to sign it. If you're looking to purchase one of these, um, I would I'd definitely give it a go. And we will call it at that. Feel free to leave a comment or um, subscribe and whatnot. Have a great day.